So, Kirsten, I'm so glad we had a chance to get together today because it's the last day you've uh, spent an entire semester here. And so, um, as you go off into your career, um, the, there's a formal evaluation that, that's required by your school so that they can kind of get an idea of what you've been doing over the last three months and how the semester's gone. And, and I've written everything up. I've got it, I've got it here on a piece of paper, or in, on several pieces of paper. But, and, and I'll be giving these to your instructor. Okay. But I wanted to, to make sure that I w went over with you and kind of, it's kind of a, a summary of how the entire semester has gone. And so it's going to be me telling you what I've observed and where I've seen you grow and things I've seen you do, things that I can, you know, suggestions I can give you for improvement um, as you go on into your nursing career. If you have any questions, though, as we go through this, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. If there's something that doesn't make sense, I, I really want you to be real clear. This isn't meant to be, um, it's not meant to be a bad thing, you know, but there's always, I mean, no matter who we are, there are always things that we can work on and to, to just be better. And as you start this, this journey into this career of nursing, you know, it's all about how, how can I get better. So I just want to tell you that, you know, when you first started that very first day and, and we went over expectations and things you wanted to learn during this semester and, and how you wanted to grow, I've really seen you do that. I mean, um, that the, the very first day when you have, you know, you're, you're just kind of following me around and then taking one patient and then taking two patients and over the course of time you just you've just gotten better and better and felt more confident in your skills and your ability to take on more patients and and that's really a good thing because out there in the real world you're not going to be taking care of one or two people you're going to be taking care of a number of people and being able to organize yourself organize your time organize your patients then that that's all to the it's all going to be to your strengths and to make your work environment and your workplace so much better for you. So I see that you've really, really grown in that area. You know, remember those first couple of days when it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much to do mm -hmm. and you didn't know what to do first and you didn't know second and you're kind of bouncing around all over the place. I hope that you've seen um, through time how you've just gotten better and you're like, you walk in, you are like, this is how I'm going to organize my day. I know that you're an organizer. <laughs> you love to like have those lists and, and, and one, two, three, four, and, and, and you just you know, go right down the list and that keeps you very, very, very um, structured and directed. Um, try not to. Probably one of the things I would just caution you though is sometimes we get so ingrained in I've got to follow the list that when someone throws something at you that wasn't on the list it like throws you for a loop. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, I would agree with that. I definitely think that because I am so like process oriented and when I do make my list it is something I struggle with being able to change out of that mode and add something or completely switch it and I know in this field it's going to be ever evolving my list will be but um, so I'm, I'm glad that you did bring that up because it is definitely something that I feel I continue need to continue to work on. Good. It's kind of like patients when if they would just follow the textbook it would be so much easier to take care of them and yet th th they come <laughs> in and it's like wait a minute this wasn't supposed to happen and it just kind of throws you off so I as long as you your your organizational style of being one two three four and very ordered that works for you, but also give yourself a little bit of slack so that when those okay. unexpected things show up, you don't, it, it doesn't just, you know, go into a, a complete meltdown because okay. that, that can happen. So that was very good. Um, I see that you're, uh, the other thing is that you're, you're, you're looking for and, and trying to uh, learn more by experiencing other things that might not even be nursing. So I remember that day that, that you went and, and watched the lady that was having the, the patient that was having the endoscopy. Mm -hmm. And how, I mean, that's not necessarily things that us nurses do, but it's so important to see what other healthcare providers are doing to and for our patients so that we can be better healthcare providers. What, what did you think of that experience? 
I thought it was great because about a month later I had another patient that came in that was getting ready to go and I was transporting her down there and she was really anxious and pretty scared about it and I was able to honestly give her a good idea of what was going to happen and I could tell that that gave her a little bit of anxiety reduction. Um, obviously she was still a little bit nervous but uh, I definitely saw the benefit in getting to go and see that and, and really know what was going on in that aspect. That's good because that, that truly does help when you can honestly say I can, I can tell you exactly what's going to happen and then when they get down there and it does happen that way they just are like oh I remember my nurse saying that this was going to happen and this was going to happen and so I'm more prepared for it. Doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to be less scared because it's always a scary procedure but it does it does kind of bring down the anxiety a little bit when, when it's like okay I know this is coming, I know this is coming, I know this is coming. So that's good and I would encourage you to continue to, to look for those experiences because, you know, you've been here for three months, but I can tell you right now, you have not seen everything there is to see. Yeah. <laughs> and you've not experienced everything there is to experience, and there's going to be so much more in your future. So always, always, you know, even years down the line, a new procedure comes up, it's like, pick me, I want to go see what's going on, because you learn so much for that from that, even if you're not actively doing that. So that's really, really okay. good. That's good so. You know, um, so your patient care has been wonderful, your organization style has been wonderful, you, get, you seem to get along with people, even though I know you're kind of a solitary person, you know, and, and so, you know, you like to, like to kind of go off in a corner and be by yourself and, and, and kind of regroup that way, but yet when you're out on the floor, you interact with people really, really well, your, your patients seem to respond to you in, in the way that we all, want, they're not afraid of you. So that's always a good thing, you. you know, and and so I think that, you know, again, in the future, just sharing that about yourself um, with your other coworkers, the part that, you know, I'm not necessarily the person that likes to be always in the group. I like to kind of spend some time by myself. Let them know that about you because mm -hmm. sometimes it's it seems like it's kind of a standoffish thing and it's not. I mean, you know, I know you and I know that that's that she, you know, she's taking a few minutes just to kind of gather herself, but other people might wonder, where are you and why don't you want to interact with us? So I think it's just good with future coworkers, just share little tidbits about them like you've shared them with me, okay. and, and that establishes good relationships with people. So I think, you know, the report that I'll be giving to your, your instructor is that you've met the expectations, your organizational style is good, you interact well with patients and with your coworkers, you've learned a lot of things, your skills are really, really good, and I'm just excited for you to be part of a wonderful, wonderful profession. Well, thank you. And I'm really glad we sat down and verbalized this because I think that helps me, even though I know I'm going to get a copy, it helps me for you to give me that verbal feedback to really make it concrete with with the points I need to still work on. And with that said, are you, um, was there anything that we didn't cover or weren't able to meet your need while you were here? Or how do you, how do you feel now moving on to the next step? Um, you know, I've worked in other areas where I've had other situations where I've worked with a mentor or a preceptor and they haven't taken the time to get to know me and my learning styles and, and really understand how I, how I functioned. So I don't feel like I really got that much out of that, uh, where you really took the time to get to know me and, and all of those aspects of me, and, and you played to that, and I definitely feel like I got the most benefit out of this type of setting from any other that I've ever been in. So thank you for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's all about getting to know each other and, and making this all work. And um, there's lots of patients to take care of and not enough nurses. So it's, it's really important that and, and that we establish these relationships. And as you move forward in your nursing career, I mean, at some point in time, you never know, a uh, couple of three years down the line, someone's gonna come in from nursing school and, and you're gonna be a preceptor to, to somebody else, which would be fabulous. I actually think that would be really fun, so thank you. Now, you're very, very welcome. Good luck, and I wish you all the best in your nursing career. Thanks.